Thank you to Dr. Wilder for preparing this video. For class two restorations, you can slide a wedge underneath the proximal contact in between the tooth you're working on and the adjacent tooth prior to starting the preparation to help protect that adjacent tooth. Start with the occlusal step and penetrate the occlusal surface to a depth just inside the dentin enamel junction. Extend mesiodistally and buccolingually while protecting the integrity of the cusp tips with the goal of removing caries. Next, we can prepare the proximal box. First, make a ditch cut right along where the enamel meets the dentin and extend the 245 burr to full depth while maintaining a shelf of enamel between your burr and the adjacent tooth. Then gently and carefully move towards the adjacent tooth until you break this enamel free. Return to and refine the proximal box, smoothing both the pulpal floor and axial walls. Due to the round shape of the burr, it's very likely that you'll leave hooks or spurs of enamel at the corners of the proximal box, so you can use an enamel hatchet to trim these margins and remove unsupported enamel. For added retention, you can choose to place proximal retention grooves, or divots, with a quarter round or the tip of a 169L tapered fissure burr just inside the dentin enamel junction. Note the occlusal dovetail at the mesial pit, which prevents proximal displacement of the restoration. You can roughen the preparation walls with a coarse diamond to increase surface area and improve retention. Also note clearance or visible space of about 0.5 millimeters between the prepared tooth and the adjacent tooth. After the preparation is complete, place a sectional matrix as seen here, or Toffelmeyer band if you prefer. Make sure that it's fully seated and the inferior portion of the matrix band is below the cavo surface margin of the proximal box. Reinsert the wedge underneath the proximal contact, but outside of the matrix band, so that the band is pushing right up against the prepared tooth. Then deliver the sectional matrix ring with its ends between the band and the wedge, or straddling the wedge on either side, depending on the system you're using. With a round or flat instrument, burnish the matrix band against the adjacent tooth to ensure a good proximal contact. Once your assembly is set, we can move to the next step. Apply 30 to 40% phosphoric acid etch to the entire preparation to clean off surface debris and remove the smear layer of dentin. Let it sit for about 15 to 20 seconds, and then wash it off thoroughly with water and high volume suction, rinsing for about 10 seconds. You can gently dry the tooth, but leave it somewhat moist so you don't collapse the dentin collagen fibrils. Apply prime and bond adhesive with a micro brush to all walls and floors of your preparation. Gently air thin the bond to evaporate the solvent and then cure for about 10 seconds. Place your first 2 by 2 millimeter increment of composite material into the proximal box area, compacting it with a blunt hand instrument to ensure that no voids are present. You can dip the end of the instrument in a tiny bit of adhesive to prevent the composite from sticking to it during this step. Cure this first layer for about 20 seconds, or as directed by the manufacturer. Continue this process until you have enough composite built up to restore the natural anatomy of the tooth. Take special care to re-establish the marginal ridge area against the matrix band, contouring this final layer of composite with a ball burnisher or any composite instrument.
Now it's time to remove our matrix system. We take the ring off first, then the matrix band, and finally the wedge. Cure again, this time from the buckle and lingual aspects to ensure polymerization at the gingival margin. You can contour the composite further with a round or football finishing burr to recreate the natural anatomy of the tooth. Light pressure and light strokes with the burr are best. You can check for flash with the tine of an explorer. You can remove flash with a finishing burr or manually with a cleoid discoid hand instrument used along the cavosurface margin. You can carefully recreate the occlusal embrasure with the finishing burr as well. Softlex discs are excellent for contouring the proximal surfaces and recreating the embrasures. If access is difficult, you can use a narrow flame-shaped finishing burr. A number 12 scalpel blade, or even an amalgam knife, can be used to remove excess composite at the margins. It's usually easiest to leave the rough side of the softlex disc facing the handpiece and gently pulling toward you as you contour the restoration. Finally, you can finish and polish the restoration with a silicon impregnated rubber polishing point. Green, then yellow, then white is the typical coarse to fine Jiffy polishing system. You can check one last time for flash, then verify your proximal contact by running waxed floss through the contact, and check final occlusion with articulating paper. Thank you so much for watching, we'll see you in the next video.